Well, Donald Trump is a question mark in this 2016 race. I spoke with him earlier about his plans, free speech, Jeb Bush, and whether you have to be to run for president. <laughs> Great to see you, Mr. Trump. Thanks for being here. There's a Bloomberg poll saying 62% of Republicans would never consider you for the GOP nomination. And I think that's because, and they checked it, but that's because nobody thinks I'm running. They don't think I'm running. Nobody, it's, it's really a funny thing. As you know, I came and like, beat almost everybody in the New Hampshire Bloomberg poll, the same thing, and yet they don't think I'm running. So we'll see what happens. I mean, in June, I will announce one way or the other. And I think you may be surprised. Even you may be surprised. Mm. But I'll be announcing sometime in June. I will only be surprised if you say you are running. Really? Okay. Well, that's good. Will I, I be I surprised? I hope you're going to be there. All right. Let's talk about Iraq because this has become, you know, a question. First of all, did you see the Jeb interview that we had? And what did you think of how he handled the Iraq question? I think he's a reluctant warrior. I think he doesn't want to be running. I don't know why he's running. He looks unhappy. He looks like he just doesn't want to be there. I watched the interview. Uh, the question couldn't have been any easier. Let me put it to you. If, if, you know, knowing what we know now, would you have authorized the invasion into Iraq? Well, as you know, you don't have to put it to me because you have the article that said in 2004, I was strongly against ever going in. Right. Because I viewed Iraq and Iran as being the same in terms of power. And they'd push one way, they'd push another way, you know, they'd have their five-year war, and then they'd stop and take a breather, and then they'd have their five-year war, nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. We decapitated Iraq, and now Iran has taken over the entire Middle East. They're taking over. But, you know, some of the Republicans the say that that is the fault of President Obama for pulling out all the troops when we had victory, that they snatched, uh, you know, de defeat from the it, jaws of victory. It, it's the fault of Obama, there's no question. It's the fault of Bush for going in. It's the fault of Obama for getting out. It's a disaster. The war should have never happened. And then once it did happen, you should have at least left the troops in. Mm -hmm. So it's really a double fault. Let's talk about Amtrak, because after the Philadelphia train crash, you started tweeting out about infrastructure, saying the only one to fix the infrastructure of our country is me, and talking about how you know how to build things, which is uh, obviously true. It is true. But we, we were talking on this show about you know those who are blaming infrastructure as, what, what are you talking about? The, the, the guy was going twice the speed limit. How do you make this an infrastructure problem? Well, even that's infrastructure, because if they had the right things on the rails, the thing, it couldn't have gone more than 50 miles but an hour. But you can't blame the crash on infrastructure. Look, the, the crash appears to be the fault of the driver. Sure. Infrastructure may have been able to overcome may, that, re, but wasn't the cause. Regardless of the train, okay, the train. The bridges are falling apart. The roads are falling apart. The medians are falling The airports look like hell. I mean, the airports, I come back from places like Qatar. Uh, we're doing a tremendous job in Dubai, two actually very big jobs in Dubai. The airports are unbelievable. Then we land at LaGuardia, it's third world country. We land at Kennedy with potholes on the runway. Mm -hmm. We land at LAX in Los Angeles, well, the Newark money. Airport. Takes money. Sure, we have to have the money. We President have to take Obama's it back been pushing for more money for infrastructure. Yeah, the Republicans have been saying push, we don't have it. He doesn't push the right way. You have to take the money back. You have to take the jobs back from China, from Mexico, from all these other countries that are absolutely eating our lunch. And nobody can do that like I can do it. Let's talk about free speech, because after that Pam Geller event down in Garland, Texas, where they were attacked and the two would-be jihadis were shot dead by the police force, you also sent out some tweets um, saying, why taunt in order to provoke possible death? Dumb. I think that Pam moment. Geller is a terrible messenger. I think she's terrible. And what she's doing, we have enough problem without taunting and driving everybody crazy. But my question to you is, because this turned into a bigger thing, like what do we stand for as Americans, if not for freedom of speech and the ability to express yourself? And this speech in particular, which was in defiance, it's, it's like the cartoon that won the contest. It had Muhammad standing there saying, you can't draw me. And the person looking up to him saying, that's why I draw you. It was about okay. people trying to shut down an American ideal. And this group, however unsympathetic they may have been, saying we reject that attempt they were totally unsympathetic now you look at mohammed and you look at some of the positions they have mohammed and some people are going to get extremely upset about it now i'm not the only one and i'm not the only conservative republican that feels this way and they're lucky even to be alive but why with all the problems we have why taunt what do you all mean what we're now? What do you, look, the, you know the, the white house is saying the the administration is saying we're taking care of isis that this is just a oh, setback in ramadi and that the overall strategy is a success it's a total disaster we're losing it so badly. They're cutting off the heads of every Christian that they can find and what, other people. What would you do differently? Well, you're going to have to be stronger. You're going to have to go in there much stronger. You know, I'll tell you one thing I'd do different. So they caught the accountant, as they call him, the accountant, and a few days ago. Instead of talking about it, they should be silent. And they should go, now there's bragging, oh, we got him. First, he was a mid-level person. And it was such publicity. We got him, we got him, we got him, one person. 
they should have been quiet and gone after others that weren't suspected. You know, it's very interesting. I'm a big fan of General Douglas MacArthur. I'm a big fan of General George Patton. They don't talk, they do. You haven't been a military leader and you haven't actually governed a state or a... Okay, so a all over the world I do business. I make great deals. I've made hundreds of millions of dollars against China. All over the world I make money and I build great things. We're talking about building walls. Who's gonna build a wall like me on the southern border? I built a great company. I know you've hired staffers in Iowa, I and New Hampshire, South staffers. Carolina, so it's a, it appears you're gearing people. up. Yeah, I'm gearing up, and we'll see what happens, and you may be very surprised. I hope you're going to be there. You have make, to be a little it's very to run, don't you? A I little bit? I want to make, no, not really. I want to make the country great again. This country is a hellhole. We are going down fast, and I'm a conservative, but I have a big heart. I will take care of people. But a lot of people want me to run, and we'll see what happens. Great to see you. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Thank you very much. What do you think? Do you have to be a little... You also have to be a little... to be on TV. We just heard the Donald blaming the Amtrak crash on infrastructure. Up next, the first report from the NTSB on what they are blaming and dismissing. Don't miss this.